All praise, all glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the heavens and the earth and that which is between them. May his infinite, endless peace and blessings be upon the leader of creation, the jewel of creation, the purpose of creation, the beloved to Allah, the nearest to Allah, the dearest to Allah, none other than Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Allah Almighty has blessed us with the month of Ramadan where we have learned and benefited from the Quran al Karim and no doubt fasting within this beautiful and holy month. The 21st of Ramadan highlights the martyrdom of the Amir al Mu'mineen, the leader of the faithful the son-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam none other than Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib karram allahu wajhahu al-kareem. Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib is the first cousin of the Prophet alayhi salam and his lineage and the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is similar except for one person. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is Abdullah and for Ali, it is Abu Talib, meaning Abu Talib is a son of Abdul, uh, Abdul Muttalib, who is son of Hashim, the son of Abdul Manaf, the son of Qusay, and the son of Kilab, all the way till Adnan. And it's an authentic uh, narration uh, to the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the son of Abu Talib, who is Abdul Manaf, Abu Talib, because of his kunniyah, and we'll mention that inshallah. And uh, the son of uh, Abdul Muttalib, the son of Hashim, the son of Abdul Manaf, the son of Qusay, the son of Kilab, the son of Murrah, all the way till Adnan. So that is his lineage, and his lineage and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's lineage go hand in hand. He is the son of Fatima bint Asad, who is the first cousin of Abu Talib. Fatima bint Asad is the first cousin of Abu Talib because she is. Uh, the do, uh, her father is the son of Abdul Muttalib and those two Abu Talib and Asad are brothers so she is the first lady to give birth to a Hashimi son and after giving birth and accepting Islam she migrated to Madinat al Munawwara she lived a long life mashallah after the marriage of Sayyiduna Ali and Sayyida Fatima salamullah alayha she lived with, the, with them in their house and thereafter she departed from this dunya as a believer. And it is said about her that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama climbed into her grave. So when they were putting her body down, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama climbed down in a grave and he put her to rest. Subhanallah. And why wouldn't the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama do that? Like what would be the reason the Prophet alayhi salam wouldn't do that? Because wasn't it this lady... When Abdul Muttali passed away, she took care of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They say that they wouldn't eat food without Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam being on that table, and she was looking after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Every need, everything that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam needed, uh, Sayyida Fatima bint Asad would take care of the needs of the Messenger of Allah alaihi salatu wasallam. So we know that Sayyiduna. Ali ibn Abi Talib, his mother's name is Fatima, his father's name is Abdul Manaf, yani Abu Talib. And he was born in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, to some people, mashallah, it's a great honor for those people uh, who are born in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in that time, many people were born in the house of Allah Almighty because there was an easy access. Like the Kaaba as it is today, like the, where the door is now, the door is much higher to where it was. At that time, there were double doors. Like you'd go in from one way and you'd go, come out the other way. If you look inside the Kaaba, uh, if you go on the net and you, you look at the uh, images of the Kaaba, you will see that there is still like an outline where the door was. So now they've like raised the door to an extent because people would look at the Muslims, like 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. And if two, three million people gathered together in that place, it's, it's, it's very difficult as you know as, as it is. So they've raised the doors. So he was born inside the Kaaba, mashallah. And they named <coughs> Ali Asad. His mother named him Asad, the lion. 
So when Abu Talib found out about this, he wasn't that at that time, and he found out about this, that she's named him Asad. He said, no, we're going to name him Ali. Yeah, we're going to name him Ali. So they named him Ali. So, but he would take honor and pride in this later on in his life that my name is Asad. My original name is Asad, Lion. And no doubt he was Asadullah. He was a Lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His kunniya is Abu Hassan. Because of his son, his eldest son, Sayyiduna Imam Hassan, the son of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he's also known as Abu Turab. This is also his kunniya, Abu Turab. And why is he known as Abu Turab? What does Abu Turab mean? Abu Turab means the father of dust. Like, it'll seem a bit strange. Like, why, why did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why is he called uh, Abu Turab? One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went to his house and uh, he asked his daughter, Sayyida, Fatima radiallahu anha, Ya Fatima, uh, where is your husband? And she said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayka wa sallama, he is in the masjid. We had an argument and he's gone to the masjid. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama went to the masjid and Sayyidina Ali was leaning against the wall. The masjid went like this now, like you know, beautiful carpets and you know, cemented and everything. So it's dusty and he was leaning against the wall and the Prophet alayhi wa said, Kum ya Baturab, stand O Abu Turab. So he stood up and he had a dusty back and the Prophet ﷺ shook his back and he said, from now on, you are Abu Turab. You are the father of dust. Like he said to Abu Bakr uh, and Abu Huraira and he gave them these beautiful titles. But strange thing is, when the Prophet ﷺ gave these people these titles, they became renowned by them. Like everyone would call him Abu Turab and he'd take like, great pleasure in this. Like, I'm Abu Turab. I am the father of dust, Sayyiduna. Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. We know that uh, his father had six children. The eldest of them is Talib. Talib. This is why we call him Abu Talib. Yeah, for those people who say, why do we call Abu Talib? Abu Talib. They think that's his name. That's not his name. His name is Abd Manaf. But we call him Abu Talib because of his eldest son. He was born at like, similar time to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His second son is Akil. Akil, we know him because of his son, Muslim bin Akil. And Muslim bin Akil is that person who stood shoulder to shoulder with Sayyiduna Imam Ali Maqam, Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he was mistreated, and we know the narration, we'll hear about that at the time of Karbala. His third son is Jafar, Jafar at Tayyar. Wow, subhanallah, what an individual. Jafar at Tayyar, they say about him that there was nobody in Makkah al who resembled the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than Jafar. Now when they look at Jafar, they think the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is coming. And what happened to Jafar in the battle of Uhud? And before the battle of Uhud, when they were sent to uh, Najashi in Abyssinia, uh, Jafar was the one that was negotiating with the Negus. Like Negus would ask them questions like, who are you? What's your background? This, that, the other. And so Jafar bin Abi Talib, he would explain to them, this is who we are, this is what our Prophet teaches us, etc. And this is what we say about Isa ibn Maryam. And as a result, what happened? The negotiations were good. And as a result, they stayed over there for a while, subhanAllah. So that's that Jafar. Uh, many things could be said about, said about him at the Battle of Uhud. His arms were cut. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I see Jafar, he was martyred. I see Jafar, mashaAllah ta'ala in the heavens and he is flying. Allah Almighty has granted him wings. Don't quote me, it might have not been uh, the battle of Uhud, it might have been a different battle, but nonetheless he was martyred and Allah Almighty granted him wings. And the Prophet ﷺ says that I see him in the, uh, roaming in the paradise, subhanAllah. I see him roaming, Sayyidina Jafar, at tayyar radiallahu uh, Then the fourth one, Sayyiduna Ali. And we will talk about him and we know a bit about him, we will talk about him inshallah ta'ala. The daughters, Sayyida Fakha, that's the fifth one, right? That's the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Talib, Fakha. And how do we know Fakha? We know her as Ummahani. You might have heard of the name Ummahani. Ummahani is the first cousin of the Prophet, and she is also that woman. There's two narrations, and you might have heard them both, that when the Prophet went to Mi'raj, he was in the Hatim of the Kaaba. Or he was in the house of Ummahani. 
the Umm Hani, cousin of the Prophet وسلم, and the sister of Sayyidina uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala, and the sixth one of them, and the second daughter of Sayyidina uh, Abu Talib is Jumana. She accepted Islam and she passed away in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah could be said about them individually, like a full Juma could be um, an explanation of these people, but we will leave it there inshallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Ali was born, he knocked on the house of Sayyidina Abu Talib, and he said, I would like to take care of this child of yours. Ali, I would like to take care of this child of yours. Why was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing that? Today, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is financially well. Alhamdulillah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is married to say the Khatija radiallahu anha. So the Prophet alayhi wa is able to take that pressure of Abu Talib. And let me tell you another thing about Abu Talib, the father of Ali, he's very poor. I know Arabs, they marry many, many, many times. Abu Talib only married once. Abu Talib only married once. So he says, oh father, because that's how he treated him, let me take... Uh, Ali with me and I will look after him inshallah ta'ala and then we will take care of him and that's what he did and so Ali was nurtured in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the best holes, uh, households in Makkah al Mukarramah. so one day when Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he entered the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he saw Sayyida Khatija and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praying together so Ali says assalamu alaikum what are you doing like, I have never seen this before. What are you guys doing? By, by the way, he's about eight, nine years of age at this point. So the Prophet ﷺ says that Wahi has come to me, the Quran to me, and I am a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the religion that we follow. We believe in Allah, Allah and I'm his messenger. Would you like to believe? So what does he say? He says, I will go to my father and I will ask him. So he went to his father, Abu Talib, and he said, Abu Talib, or father, father, look, this is what the Prophet calls me to. So he says that follow him, he will never ever call you towards a lie. Whatever he says, follow him, right? Whatever he calls you to, follow him because he will never ever call you to a lie. And then we saw the difficult times that come upon the Prophet and the believers and how Abu Talib stood shoulder to shoulder with the Prophet. But during the time and the life of Sayyidah Fatima, radiallahu anha, and six months after the passing away, meaning after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, six months and six months later, Sayyidina Fatima passed away, Sayyidina Ali only married once. And that was to Fatima radiallahu ta'ala. And they had four children uh, who are Al-Hassan, Al-Hussein, Sayyidina Shabab Ahl al-Jannah. That they are the leaders of the youth of paradise, the two sons. Then he had two daughters. One was Zainab and one was Umm Kulthum. And he had daughters later on as well that he would name them Zainab and Umm Kulthum. But these two were known as Zainab Al-Kubra and Umm Kulthum Al-Kubra. The great ones, the old ones. All together in his life, after the passing away of Sayyidah Fatima, Ali radiallahu an, married eight times. Eight times he married. So not together, but after he divorced a wife or she passed away, something of that sort. So all together in his life, he married eight times. And he had 33 children with them. But the most known are Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein and the two daughters. In terms of his height, Ali was of an average height. Towards the shorter side, stocky, full of strength, full beard, bold head. And the reason why he had bold head is because of the masla of fiqh. That when somebody has, he meets his wife, and you know what I mean there, uh, and he bathes himself, but one part of his body is dry, then his ghusl is not done. So as a result, because he had a like, thick beard, Arabs generally have like thick hair and thick beards, he shaved his head off. And he said, because I, that could be risky for me, right? It could be risky and I don't want to go down that line. Just because of that, I could be sin. So Sayyidina so, you know, Ali from that then on, he took his hair, hair off. He took the greatest risk of his life when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated to Medina al Munawwara, the Prophet ﷺ told him that tonight, O oh Ali, you will be resting in my bed. You will be wearing my clothes and you will be resting where I was resting and everything will be happening at home. I will leave you with these things, the amanat, the people of Makkah have left me with, but I will see you in Medina al Munawwara. So he stayed in the house of the Prophet sallallahu and there were 50 people guarding the house of the Prophet ﷺ. In the middle of the night, the people of Quraysh, the Mushrikeen came, they barged into the house, they 
looked into the, the duvet, the bed, and they saw Ali resting there. They, grip, they, they took hold of him and they said, what are you doing here? I says, well, you know, I'm here. This is where I live. Why? You know, what's the problem? Uh, they said to him, look, we're looking for Muhammad. Why is he not here, sallallahu alayhi wa Why is he not here? He said, well, I don't know. You're the ones who are guarding the house. How do I know where he is? Uh, you should be, no, I've fallen asleep. I don't know where he is. If anything, you guys should know. I should be asking you where he is. So they dragged him from the house of the Prophet Sallallahu to the Kaaba. They beat him up so much so that he was uh, black and blue. And they said to him, look, tell us where he is. He says, look, I don't know where he is. You should know where he is for you are the people uh, that were guarding the house. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala took that risk. And he could have been martyred like, because they were so angry at that point. But there are two things here. One is... No doubt, he took a risk for the Prophet ﷺ. But the second thing is, the Prophet ﷺ told Ali radiallahu an that I will see you in Medina. So he already knew that the Prophet ﷺ is going to see me in Medina because the Prophet ﷺ has said that he will see me in Medina. So he knew, inshallah, nothing will happen. Uh, but Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he pays back the amanat, the gifts, whatever the Prophet ﷺ had, the belongings to these people, and he makes his way to Makkah al Mukarramah. It took him two weeks to reach. Uh, Medina to Munawwara, sorry, Medina to Munawwara. It took him two weeks to reach Medina to Munawwara. Where was he drinking water from? How was he, you know, able to get to Medina? He had nobody to go with him. He had nobody to go with him. Subhanallah. Look at this individual and the risk he takes for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So his time of marriage comes to Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu anha and his mawla, his servant, he informs him that someone has proposed to Fatima bint Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Someone has proposed to Fatima, why didn't you propose to her? His servant says to Sayyidina Ali, why didn't you propose to Fatima radiallahu anha? He says, well, how can I propose to her? I've got nothing. Like Guraba, Fukara, like Fakir people, like, I've got nothing. He says, just go to the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and talk to him. So, the, so Sayyidina Ali goes to the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa all shy and everything, he goes to the house of the Prophet, wants to talk to the Prophet. He has entrance to the house of the Prophet, uh, and he sits down and he doesn't say anything. So the Prophet, he looks at the face of Ali and says, Ali, what's the issue? And the Prophet starts smiling and he says, Have you come for the hand of Fatima? Allahu Akbar. The Prophet knows, Have you come for the hand of Fatima? He says, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet says, Yes, that's fine, that's done. But what do you have to give to Mahar? Now, what do you have for Mahar, for Fatima? We have to give Mahar uh, for the marriage. Uh, he says, Ya Rasulullah, I, I don't have anything. And the Prophet ﷺ says, do you remember in Badr I gave you, remember the, the marriage took place after Badr. Do, do you remember I gave an armor at the time of Badr? And he says, yes, Ya Rasulullah. So he says, the Prophet ﷺ says, take this and go sell this. And then whatever you get of it, we'll use as Mahar. So who does he go and find? He finds Sayyidina Usman radiallahu anh, in the marketplace. He says, Usman, do you want to buy this armor? Usman says, yes. Yes? He says, yes. He says, I need this money for the mahar. All the companions knew that like Abu Bakr knew, Usman knew, Umar knew that this was going on behind the scenes. So he gives the armor uh, to Usman. Usman says, this is a gift from me to you. He buys it for 400 dirhams. Right? 400 dirhams, big number, mashallah. So I just say 400 pounds. And he then gifts it to Ali. And he says, Ya Ali, you will use it better than me. Yeah, you have this as a gift from me, you will use it better than me. So Sayyidina Ali, he gains 400 uh, dirhams from Sayyidina Osman as well as an armor. He comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look, mashallah, this is happening, alhamdulillah. So the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam marries Sayyidina Fatima from the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a son, uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, who has come from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the Baytul, Baytullah Sharif, the Kaaba, and they get married and mashallah, have children together. Alhamdulillah. The Prophet Ali Islam loved Sayyidina Ali so much so that he would say, Anta minni wana minka ya Ali. That I, you are from me, Ali, and I am from you. And the narration about the Battle of Khaybar. That when the Battle of Khaybar was about to take place, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arose and he said, O oh, companions, where, rather before he said that, he said, Today the one that I will give the standard to. He said, tomorrow the one that I give the standard to, upon his hands we will gain fatah. Right? Upon his hand we will gain victory. 
So Sayyidina Umar says, I never ever desired that maqam other than that night. So in the morning when the companions arose, the Prophet says, where is Ali? So all the companions are there now, I'm going to gain the standard, the flag. The Prophet is going to give me the standard. And the Prophet says, where is Ali? The hadith mentioned in Bukhari. And the companion says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he's got you know, oozing eyes. His eyes are infected and as a result he can't see properly. The Prophet says, <coughs> call him to me. So a man from the Ansar goes to the house of Ali, brings Ali, like he's carrying Ali in a sense that Ali is walking with him because he can't see. The Prophet ﷺ, hadith mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, I'm repeating this. The Prophet ﷺ spits in his eye, his blessed saliva is in the eye of Sayyidina Ali and he wipes over his eye and he prays for him. Ali radiallahu ta'ala and who could see better after that than he could before that. So that is the blessings of the Prophet sallallahu and then the Prophet ﷺ grants him the standard. He grants him the flag that the Nusra came from the hands of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. And we've we seen that like in Khaybar, Sayyidina Ali is just said about him that he lifted the gate of Khaybar with his bare hands. It took about so many companions, say more than eight companions that carried that gate later on. That one man Sayyidina Ali took out. This is known about his strength that when he would hold somebody, that person would stop breathing. That's how strong he was. That's the strength, mashallah. That's the strength uh, through uh, being in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all of that, mashallah. And the incident of the mubahala, that when the Christians said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you're a liar, etc. What they said about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Allah Almighty revealed that verse, and it was seen that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam bought his people, like a mutual curse that would have happened. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his people. Who were his people? He could have quote. Anybody, like Abu Bakr, Umar was there, Uthman was there, the rest of the companions were there. But he takes Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussein. That these are my people. And these are the honest, like, truthful people. That if they send a curse upon you, you will be destroyed. So they said, the Christians said, no, maybe you are a prophet of Allah. Some of them believed that he is a prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but others were doubtful of his prophecy. So they said, look, we're not going to come. So that was an honor given to Sayyidina Ali and his family at the Ahlul Bayt. Then, other than that, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates that when the verse was related, uh, revealed, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ أَنْكُمُ الرِّسَ أَحْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا The Prophet والسلام, took the companions, Sayyidina uh, Ali, Sayyida Fatima, Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein under his kisa, that the Ahl al-Kisa, these are those people, and he read this verse to them, subhanAllah. So the Prophet gave them a great maqam, but the thing is, the fadail that come for Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman are far greater. And we love them all. We love Abu Bakr. And we love them with all of our hearts. We love Sayyiduna Umar. We love Sayyiduna Uthman. And no doubt, we will give our lives for Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala. And, but there are maqam within them. Right? There are levels within them. Yes, he is the son-in-law of the Prophet. Yes, he's the cousin of the Prophet. But in the life of Abu Bakr, the Prophet was giving Abu Bakr those duties that even Ali knew that Ali would take the maqam after. But this is according to Sayyidina Ali that he said, Allah ukhbirukum bi khayri hadil ummati ba'da nabiyya. Shall I not inform you of the greatest man after the Prophet? So they said, Yes. He said, Who are Abu Bakr? That is Abu Bakr. I said, shall I, know, Abi Bakr, shall I not inform you of the one that is greater after Abu Bakr? The greatest after Abu Bakr it is Umar. And then whoever Allah Almighty wills. So this is the understanding of Sayyidina Ali. Certain people get into certain discussions and there is no need for that. The Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we love all of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that includes Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. <coughs> He even named his child later on from his mother wife, Abu Bakr. And some people say, well, Abu Bakr was a well-known name at that time. No, it wasn't. Abu Bakr wasn't a well-known name. Apart from the Abu Bakr, which other Abu Bakrs have you heard of? Probably one, two that we've heard of in hadith, but no more than that. So he named his son Abu Bakr. He narrated 500 hadith. And he was martyred on the 21st of Ramadan by a, by a man by the name of Abdul Rahman bin Muljim. They were going to martyr three people. Uh, amongst them was Amr ibn As and uh, Muawiyah bin Sufyan and Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. So these were the three people that were, they were going to martyr and they made this decision 
by the Kaaba. These were believers, subhanAllah, and how these people, the Kharijites, and how the ISIS come about, these are those who are people, this is who they look up to. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he raises the ranks of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, and he took three days after the actual stabbing for him to have been martyred. So he was a very strong man. Allah Almighty granted him strength, but Allah Almighty took him away in the month of Ramadan, masha'Allah. Alhamdulillah, and we pray to Allah Almighty that he gives us a life in accordance to the way of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala. And a lot, lot of things could be mentioned about him radiallahu anh, but because of time uh, and because of uh, space currently, inshallah ta'ala, we will stop here. Wa aqulu qawli adha astaghfirullahi li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad.